So here we have a Nissan ENV200 electric van for sale, but this one is a Voltia XL and the Voltia vans are a body conversion, body extension where you get that much there up on the roof and the rear has also been extended and that doubles the cargo capacity from four cubic meters to eight cubic meters. And the rear doors have been extended as well to give you the full loading height and these are 1.9 meters in the back and therefore tall enough to stand up in and then you've got the standard EMB 200 doors on both sides sliding door on both sides and the length of that floor is 2.5 meters then you've got solid bulkhead and you've got that uh, storage area there above the cab. Ideally, you would mount the spare wheel up there as well to get that off the floor to give you full cargo space. But you have that area there to do that if you want to. So I've had a few of these vans in before, but they've been the first generation based on the 24 kilowatt hour EMV 200, whereas this is based on a 40 kilowatt hour EMV 200. And the Voltia bodywork is all very much better on this later generation. They really have improved it. But I've got a video on the YouTube channel if you want to uh, know more about that. The doors also open 180 degrees, so you can load it with a forklift as well. So I've put the original Voltia brochure for these on the website. So if you have a look at the details of this van, you can look at that for all the dimensions payloads and all the other information you'll want to know so up front it's a standard nissan emv 200 this one is an Ascenta spec but it's got the winter pack so you've got a leather heated steering wheel and heated front seats as well and that makes a huge difference when you're driving in the winter because it's a lot more efficient to heat yourself with the seats and heat your hands on the steering wheel then running the heater at full blast heating the cabin because the heater uses the high voltage traction battery whereas the heated wheel and heated seats uses the 12 volt battery and is much more efficient and won't uh, um, use so much power and maximizes your range in the winter. So let's talk about range. Um, this has got the 40 kilowatt hour battery and uh, you're going to get typically around 150 miles out of one of these. As always, it does depend on how you drive, just like a combustion engine vehicle. But if you're doing urban sort of city driving or lower speed driving, you can get up to about 180 miles in the summer. Um, I found the other day, I was driving this from um, up north down south, M1, M40, motorway driving all the way, and I got about 135 miles. But uh, motorway driving is the most inefficient for an EV, particularly a van like this where there's a lot up top. And I was averaging 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour, so not particularly efficient driving. But when you're driving more locally, particularly if you're doing city driving, you're going to get much better efficiency and you're going to get somewhere between 150 and 180 miles out of this. So I'll just open the charge port because, of course, you're not limited to the range of the battery because you can rapid charge these. So at the front here is your charge connectors. You've got a DC connector and an AC connector. So this is your Chadamo DC rapid charging and this is a 50 kilowatt onboard charger. So if you're, as I said, driving on that motorway as I did, you can pull in, rapid charge this to extend your range if you need to do that within a day. And the full details about charging times are on the website. And this one is your AC charging, which typically you're going to be doing back at base overnight while you sleep. And then up here is some charging cables. So this is a portable charger, often called a granny cable, because you've got a three pin plug on the end. So this allows you to charge the van from a normal main socket Ideally, this shouldn't be your permanent solution because these only draw 10 amp and therefore are slow. Again, all the charging times on the website, but you could use this if you're on site during the day, or at least use this initially until you get a wall charger installed. And then here is your 
AC charging cable, type one to plug in the front of the van, type two to plug into your wall charger or any public AC charging post. So these cables are when you're charging on AC power, when you're using a DC rapid charger, you don't need a cable because the cables are always on the charger because they have to be about that thick because of the power you're drawing. And I'll just use these buttons here to change what's displayed up on the screen. So the last thing I'm gonna say about charging is when you're AC charging, which is gonna be typically back at base or um, overnight, you can see here your charge time. So the battery is at something like 75% charge. This is your battery here. And we can see if we're charging at three kilowatts, it's gonna take four hours 30. This has a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger on board and it will take three hours. Usually they knock down a bit quicker than that. But anyway, it gives you a guide up there. And then the other things I'll just show you up here on the screen. We've got the battery, there we are, 72%, so I was pretty close there. And then we've got the battery health and we've got 12 out of 12 bars there. I think the battery, I've tested this, I think it was 96%, but anyway, all the details are on the website. So as far as equipment goes, this has um, air conditioning. You've got a radio with Bluetooth. These have a reversing camera. So I've got the van switched on now. So if I put it into reverse, we've got an image out the back there where we can see what's behind the van, of course. But this van has also got an aftermarket CCTV system fitted. So we've got a um, rear view mirror here. Not that you can see anything at the back because we've got a solid bulkhead behind. But anyway, there's another camera on the back of the van and we've got a live feed there so we can see what's behind. We've also got a front facing camera there. And then on the sides, we've got other cameras here which are recording what's going on down the sides of the van and in your blind spot. And at the back there, that is that camera which is putting the view the feed should I say up in the mirror and then this is your standard Nissan camera here which is the reversing camera but all these other ones that one the side ones and the front one is recording to a unit which is down here you can't really see but anyway there's a unit down here all the camera feeds come into and uh, I don't really have the information on that but I can give you the manufacturer's details i'm not sure whether there's a subscription or what for that it came fitted in the van but also there's an antenna on the glass there so i'd imagine not only is this doing video recording but it's also probably tracking the vehicle as well it's probably a full telematic system that's the word i was looking for this van has also got a passenger airbag and side airbags as well as you can see there so while I'm sat in here and the van's on, the final thing I'll just say is the mileage. And if that's going to focus there, as you can see, it's only done eight and a half thousand miles, 8,589 miles, which is incredibly low. So next I'll talk about the condition. So if you've seen my videos before, you'll probably know that I point out every little minor stone chip mark or scratch I can find. I don't hide anything because I want people to know exactly what they're buying and these videos give people the confidence to buy the vehicle from afar without coming to view it first and then I get the vehicle delivered to you and I can get vehicles delivered anywhere in the country. So I'm going to do a walk around and show you anything I can find with this van but to be honest it's immaculate it's still looking like new. So it was sign written with vinyl uh, writing you know lettering on it I've left the lettering on the front doors but that can be removed if you don't want that but that has an added benefit to show people this is zero emission because a lot of people wouldn't realize but where the rest was moved, removed by someone there is a couple of little nicks in the paint which have all been touched up with um, some touch-up stick but uh, I'll point those out but apart from that it is immaculate there isn't a single dent or scratch in it but we'll just have a walk round. So no dents, stone chips or scratches at all in the front. No chips in the windscreen. Mirror caps are all good. Uh, there's a little nick there in the wheel trim, but it's just a plastic wheel trim. Uh, tires are all good as well. I've got the tire tread depths on the website. And then 
Uh, where were these little nicks? I don't think anywhere along, anywhere on this side. There's a few little scratches there on the plastic wheel trim. Again, tyres very good, much better on the back because it's front wheel drive, so all the wear is on the front. Um, all very tidy on the corners, often because these have got quite an overhang, they tend to get knocked on the corners or scratched, but none of it in this case, this bumper is all still looking like new. Um, what do I need to show you around here? Uh, got green number plates on it, of course, because it is a zero emission vehicle. Um, there was a tiny, tiny little dent where this door has possibly been knocked, but the paint isn't damaged and it's absolutely tiny just there. Uh, there was one little chip on the edge of the door, but it's got a dab of the correct paint and lacquer in. Um, was there something? There's the odd bit where there's still a little bit of vinyl um, that will be removed, but it did. Where, where um, someone removed the, like, the vinyl lettering, they made quite a poor job of it, so we've had to go over it again and just remove the odd little bit. So sometimes in the creases behind the rubber, there might be the odd little bit left. Um, so looking around this side, little scuff there on the plastic wheel trim. No dents or scratches on it, but along here somewhere, yeah, there, there was two centimetre nick there out the paint where the vinyl wrap has been removed and two little bits there, another bit there. They've all got a bit of paint in and lacquer in. And that's, that's just residue glue left on it there that's sort of showing up now in the sun. And then there was the other little bit, tiny bit there. I think there was one on this door somewhere. There's still a little bit of glue here. That's more visible now the sun is at a different angle. Anyway, that will be removed. Um, I can't find it now. There was another little one, but it was all incredibly minor. Uh, again, mirror caps are very good, and this wheel trim is immaculate. So, yeah, you always get that when vinyl lettering and vinyl wrap has been removed badly. But apart from that, it's still looking like new. It's absolutely in pristine condition. There are just two little marks I've seen in the bumper, just there, incredibly minor. You really wouldn't care about it. And again, just there, just low down on the bumper. But that bumper for a van is incredibly good. But as always on the website, it's a photo gallery where you can look at pictures in detail and zoom in as well. And everything I'm showing you, I've taken a picture of so you can have a really good look in detail. So let's just have a look inside. And on this and EMV 200 vans, because of the height the seat is, they tend to have premature wear on the seats, just because they're not high enough that you actually use the step and climb up in. And uh, they're at a height where you do have to fall out of the van, so consequently people just slide their bum backs and forwards into the seat. And they do tend to wear very prematurely on these vans and the fabric splits and the foam sort of bursts out. But on this, it's really good. That fabric is immaculate and the foam is still like new, all still solid. So yeah, inside, absolutely immaculate. Got a leather steering wheel, as I said. Um, rubber, genuine Nissan rubber mats there on the floor and absolutely immaculate underneath. Got a storage tray there under the driver's seat. Um, all nice and tidy. In the centre console there, got cup holders there, storage bin there. We've got additional cup holders in the dash there, which are much more um, easier to use up there. And um, yeah, there's just absolutely nothing I need to point out in the back here at all, including the headlining. It's all still like new. There is a little bit of wear on the fabric on that side. It's obviously just the way someone sat because you wouldn't only get wear on that side of the seat, of course. But it's incredibly minor. As always, I don't hide anything, but it's of no concern and you wouldn't worry about it. You probably wouldn't even notice it. So I think this is the best condition Voltia XL van that you're ever going to see in the second-hand market. It's the best one I've seen. Normally, these vehicles get used as multi-drop parcel delivery vans typically in London and they're normally a bit battered when they come into the used market but this one is still looking like new it's had such little use as you could see from inside 
This van has had such light use. It is immaculate condition inside. This corrugated plastic cladding is in such nice condition. That's the worst mark on it. Those wheel arch boxes are in good condition. Very light scratching on it, no dents. Back doors are all nice as well. There's a few little marks down the bottom where stuff is obviously slid around the floor, but usually these get punctured. It's just in really nice condition. So we've just surfaced this van as well. So that included a new cap and filter, which is behind the dash there. And they were picked to get to, so they often don't get done, even by main dealers. Also re the air conditioning. That didn't need doing, but it's something we do. We just do everything possible that we can to make sure they're 100% for the new owners. It's also done a brake lubrication service where the brakes are dismantled, cleaned, and then put back together. While the wheels are off, also rebalanced the wheels as well. And obviously checked everything out, so it's all good for the new owner. Also put a genuine Nissan double-sided gasket behind the high-level brake light there because uh, people don't usually bother and then that's a common issue where water can get in there and leak down through the door so that's been done as well and it's also just had an MOT as well so I don't think there's anything else I need to tell you but as always all the details are on the website these are very rare vans they very rarely come up on the used market particularly with a 40 kilowatt hour battery there's just very few of those around yet because most of them are still obviously in service and still under their initial lease or finance because these are quite expensive vans when they were new. I think this Voltia conversion was about £12,000 or more plus that. So uh, this is the first 40 kilowatt hour one I've had. I've had some of the previous generation 24 kilowatt hours. Um, but a very practical, usable cargo space. And actually it would make a possible camper conversion. In the past I sold a couple to uh, charities. One is being used by a food bank, another is being used as a sort of a soup kitchen where they're serving hot food out of it and therefore they needed to stand up inside. But it will also make a fantastic delivery van as well. So I think I've covered everything, but as always all the information's on the website and everything's on there in terms of uh, charging times, range, battery health, and obviously that Voltia brochure, which gives you all those dimensions. So if you're interested, give me a call or email. And as always, I can deliver these anywhere in the country. There will be a cost for that because of the size and weight of this vehicle. But it will come to you on a flatbed or a trailer, and it will be fully charged and ready to use.